Hey everyone, welcome back to Teenage Therapy. I'm Gael. I'm Thomas. I'm Kayla. I'm Mark. And welcome back to the podcast. Welcome back. We were just talking about what we're going to do for our four-year anniversary because we just hit 200 episodes that we like totally never acknowledged at all. <laughs> People yeah. were like, oh my god, you guys are so close. And they were like, oh my god, you hit it. And I was like... <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. We just 200. we're just on autopilot. So many yeah. episodes. Yeah, I, and uh, it doesn't feel like 200. Yeah, right. When was it 200th? Like that's oh, a lot. Of I, I don't know. Like there. more or less, I just lost. Yeah. Count. It's weird. That's 200 weeks of our lives. Boom, boom. That's crazy, no? Yeah, that's quite crazy. crazy. That's, that's, that's a lot I mean, of like time. every lot of every week happens. since like sophomore year, we started this shit in sophomore yeah. year. Four years. That was and then now we're in sophomore, sophomore year <gasps> college. Of college. That's of college. Whoa. Full circle moment. I know, right? Boom, boom. That's so crazy. I know. Yeah. Yeah. A- anytime I think about how much time has passed, I get really emotional. It really? <laughs> yeah, just because. Why? Like it literally felt like I was just entering high school not too <sighs> long ago, and. It's, it's already my second year. Like, I know. How is it already my second that, that's year? That's what scares me. I feel like I'm, or like we're going to graduate and we're going to be like, where did the time go? Like, it literally like went by so fast. Because freshman year passed by really fast. It did. And I know that like every year is just going to go Keep by faster. Keep on going faster. Yeah. So that's a little bit scary to think Yeah. About. Oh my God. Yeah. It does pass by really, really quickly. Scary, but we'll save all the reminiscing maybe for our four year anniversary. Yeah, yeah. It's September. That's crazy. No, that's wild. Um, this episode though is a little different. It does not have to do with thinking about memories. It's actually just about fucking eating and food, which seems Yay. like a simple topic, like food. But I feel like there's a lot to talk about. Um, look, and the, let's start with something light: the kicking crab. Oh, Psh, I love seafood oh, boil. seafood, right? Yeah, seafood. Mm. Seafood boil. Is that what it's called, the type of cuisine? Yeah. Seafood boil? Yeah. yeah. If you don't know what that is, they throw up like a bunch of seafood in a bag with sauce, and then they cook it, boil it, and then they take it out in front of you, and then just like you eat it with your hands and bread. I've always wanted to try it. You've never it. tried it? No. Never? Dude, Kayla, we have to go to San Pedro Fish Market. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. No, but I, I remember because I used to watch this one family channel on youtube and they would always eat crawfish and i'd be like oh my god that sounds so good like the way that they would eat it it was just so satisfying what family <laughs> oh god, it was like ace a family, family. channel <laughs> was it the ace family say. oh no no oh, no no god. that's not no not the ace family um it was like an actual like family family yeah it was like a, a it was like a family family random channel. family and she was just like watching wow them. this is so interesting <laughs> I went through my family channel phase. No, me too. You do, wait, you did? Yes, I used to watch like family vlogs. Are you serious? Wait, yeah. I would not have expected Dude, this I, from okay, you. No, I did. I was so big into it. And <laughs> thinking back about it, like thinking back on it now, oh, this could be a whole new episode. I'll like shut up about it because it's kind of controversial. But How it's um, weird for them to record their children. Every no, time. not even just that. It's just that like all the families I was watching were white. I know, so. Bertaley. Oh my god, me too. Right? Well, I would only watch two families. M- yeah, me too. And I would they're watch like white. one and a half. Like one every day, and then the other like every once in a while. Okay. Oh my god, both of the families were daily vloggers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then after like three years, I was like, how the vlog almost destroyed my family. I know. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, then like, <laughs> like <laughs> shut up. Anyways, um, yeah. So the they family- just ate it really fucking good. It, they just ate it really good because the dad, like his family owned like a seafood place i guess and he would just be eating that crawfish and I'd be like, oh my god i want to try it crawfish? like i still want to try it to this day crawfish is so good but it, it did give so me food poisoning like i want to say sophomore year of high school have really? you eaten it since no <gasps> because like i i used to love seafood because my family eats it all the time but ever since i got food poisoning and i didn't even know if it was from like the crawfish or from mm-hmm. something else i ate but seafood kind of like gives me a nasty fe- like feeling. shrimp too right Ew. yeah shrimp. oh i'm just allergic to shrimp but, but you still eat it yeah not that i like it but if it's like in the food i'm not uh, gonna go out of my way to like go pick it out <laughs> as you should no that's yeah. good stuff i'm like mildly allergic wait are you guys allergic to any foods little just babies sensitive lactose not really i'm not i like have a good stomach yeah i'm not allergic to anything yeah that's me call like every fruit gives you like a rash or uh, something. Oh was yeah. it strawberries? Oh, no. no, it was bananas. Bananas. And it was like, I don't. It kind of went away, I think, 
But when I was younger, at any time I ate fruit, it would give me like the itchiest like feeling in my throat. And I was like, oh my God, I can't okay. eat it. And everyone thought like, why don't you eat fruit? Like you just like, <laughs> you need to grow. I'm like, I love candy. fruit. I just can't eat it. Like, so sad. Yeah, I, know. I mean, sad. I could eat it now. Coconut water does give me like that feeling, but I love coconut water so much. Like, so good. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> yeah. I would do the same. Me too. Yeah. I would still eat food. Like, imagine you were allergic to chicken, your favorite thing Dude, on that'd earth. That'd be crazy. No, yeah, yeah. that'd be so sad. Yeah. But thankfully, unless you have like a bad reaction to it, yeah, you like, could keep eating it, right? Mm-hmm. But mine isn't that bad. I think though. so. Well, seafood in general, I kind of avoid because. I don't crave it very often. I crave it every once in a while. And the craving has been there recently because, like, it's Ooh. so good. No, but the reason I, I brought up the kicking crab is because Thomas was part of this discussion, which I think is really important for me, at least, is, dude, I, it's so hard finding a good restaurant because everything needs to be just right. And I was explaining to Thomas and my other friend that I don't want to go to the kicking crab because there's just something about, like, chain restaurants that makes me so so depressed to eat there like no matter how good the food is like even if the food is good like whatever just the fact that it's a chain restaurant makes me sad like i dread it it drains my energy why you know i know the owner you know the owner the owner of the franchise do you yeah that's so funny that's funny sorry to the owner but that's fun it's just like i don't know like i i think it's because i like i remember when i used to just go to like restaurants as a kid and they would always be like the chain restaurants like denny's or i help or something and i never found a lot of joy in it like i always kind of felt like uncomfortable i never really felt good so i don't know what it is i've been trying to figure out more and more but there's just something about the soullessness of a of a little denny's or i hop or fucking like kicking crab or what are some random uh chilies or canes applebee's applebee's yeah like an applebee's canes is fine fast food is like whatever but like canes like this or not canes like the sit down ones like chilies tgi fridays the kicking crab it's just like i'm so sorry this is maybe a niche thing but it really does drain my soul i get where like what you're coming from because i feel that way too sometimes like if like i'd rather go to an established um like locally owned restaurant rather than a chain one but if my friends just want to go eat at the chain one, then I'll be like, fine, like we can just eat there. I think that was just the issue with the conversation that guy was talking about is that he sounded so pretentious because our friend was just like, I mean, can we just go through the kicking crab? You know, like if you're craving seafood, let's just go there. Like it's right there. And then guy was like, he was going on this like 15 minute tangent <laughs> about like, oh, kicking crab, like no, like chain, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, dude, he just wants seafood. Yeah. <laughs> Because, dude, the, also, I think this has to do with, like, the way I just view money. That I'm, like, I have to get the best and I have to, like, maximize, the, the like, the dollar per experience per, like, you know? Like, every single dollar I spent has to be used and, like, utilized to its fullest extent. Sorry if you could hear a baby <laughs> in the background. This is a house. I don't know what's going on. Anyways, yeah. So, like, if I'm, like, okay, if I'm going to spend $15, am I going to spend it at Chipotle? Am I going to spend it at, like, a Chinese food place? Or am I going to go to, like, somewhere else? And I always have to, like, make that choice. I get because I'm the exact same way. But you have to make compromises. Oh, you do. You do. It doesn't mean I won't be, like, miserable. Like, I'll do it, sure. But that's why I was like, okay, like, if I'm craving seafood boil, I'd rather wait to spend, like, what, $30 on this fucking seafood boil when I get to go to, like, the nice one, not the chain one, even though they might taste the same. It's just something about the ambiance. Like, it... Ambiance does know. a lot. I choose restaurants for ambiance over food sometimes. Like, if it's a good location, vibes are there, food not so much, it's my top choice. And also, like, ambiance doesn't mean, like, fancy. It doesn't mean, like, yeah. good lighting, good everything. It just means, like, the people that work there, like, care about the food. Like, it's, like, not a corporate capitalist restaurant like ambiance just mean you feel like homey you know yeah with like just nice lighting yeah that's like, really just it vibes. some plants yeah that's it just like care about your workers <laughs> care about the food yeah. and i will care about your restaurant i anytime i walk into a restaurant or any food shop i always pay attention to the ambiance and like 
so <laughs> much could be achieved if they had just changed the lighting. Like yeah. lighting does so much. Mm. Get rid of the fucking marble countertops. Put something else. I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder, like, can I just like make a business out of going out there and selling like LED light bulbs so they could like tone it down a little bit with the white light and just like put something a little think, nicer. I feel like I'm sure it exists. They just don't do, they just it. Don't do it <laughs> for whatever it's reason. Crazy. I, I know. I wonder, like, if I own the restaurant, they're just like some. I would like make it look so yeah. cute and all that. And do it. I do want to actually eventually. Really? Yeah, I think what eventually. food would you have at your restaurant? I don't know. But I just do know like having some sort of restaurant, even if it's just like a pop up, is something I want to eventually do. Because I think there's just so many cool concepts when it comes to food and eating. Like I'm so passionate about this because it's just like eating really. It's funny because it's human nature that eating kind of brings together people because it's such an evolutionary. Um, What's that word? Constant that it really helps with bonding, which I think is why like I like like Korean barbecue so much because you get that feeling of like you just finished fucking hunting and your instincts activate and now you're cooking the meat in That's front of so you. Man. I know, so manly. <laughs> that is so manly. Okay. I thought you were gonna say like because you know you're like yeah, gathering. Yeah, like, sharing that's what food. I was thinking. Well, yeah, no, that's, what I, that's food, what I used to talk about. Giving hunting. it to each other. No, you don't get it. Like that's what I. Like, that's what I was Your gonna say. Instinct. No, th- I was gonna. That's why I like it. But we have to acknowledge the reason for why that is. It's like the primal instincts. Like I need a hunter and a gatherer. Do you think that you would ever like hunt for your own food? Oh, that's crazy. That's another level of like masculinity. Fish. Yeah, that's so masculine. I fish for my own food. You would fish oh, you would for fish? your food. Yeah. So you'd be pescatarian. Is that what they're called? There's something a little feminine about fishing. What do you mean? <laughs> really i feel like it's the most I, <laughs> no i feel like low-key yeah like a lot of men do it into the men thing but i feel like there's like fishing there's some like femininity in that that's so pretty you know it's like oh, fishing no, it is beautiful fish, right it's like, kind of pretty hunting is a lot more like i don't know okay. masculine i don't like it hunt. why because i don't want to be shooting an animal i know no like you want it. someone else to shoot them for you <laughs> oh that's basically what we're just saying yeah, would you guys ever go vegan i would try it but i feel like it's expensive like, I feel like it's expensive, and you just are so limited, so little things. Yeah. Dude, I'm like, cheese? No. Sour cream? No. I egg? love cheese. No. Literally? I need my cheese. Literally, most breads? No. Cheese. It has egg. I'm like, fuck. I don't know this Dude, a good cheese Maybe nice. I would... Uh, um, no. Would you guys be, like, vegetarian? No. I'll go vegan. No. You'd go vegan? As a challenge? As a challenge. As a like challenge. a month. Like Try a it out month. for a month. Mark, yeah. I challenge you to go vegan for three I feel months. like you couldn't no, do it, No, you can't. Not right now. <laughs> I didn't he just myself. finished eating McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have that my last meal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I could go vegan, honestly. I don't think I ever will. I'm so sorry. I have recently met, like... A vegan? Yeah, more. Like, I've had more vegan friends, which oh. was, like, definitely a new experience. Because literally my whole life, why have I never had a vegan friend? Everyone around me has always been... Yeah. I don't think I. Have. I think right. Also, I've had a vegan friend. The most I've had is pescatarian, but mm. even then, it wasn't someone I was really like talking mm. to. Another thing is like veganism isn't common in like low income areas mm. because you don't afford the luxury of like oh yeah. I can't healthy eat. food is like, expensive. Yo, you, yeah, exactly. So yeah. yeah, dude. No, yeah. I. That's why you see a lot of white people that are vegan. vegans. Like that, they're the majority. That's why in LA it's all vegans, yeah. vegans, vegans, but not anywhere else. Um. It's weird. I There's just so much that... It's such a big decision to go vegan. Everyone that I've talked to that's either trying to go vegan or is vegan, they always say they're just like, oh, it's because like I really love animals. And so I'm like, oh, that's really sweet. But, so we don't love animals. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, I don't love them in no, Because yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm guilty. Like, I, I, I'm in the wrong. That's why like I feel like going vegan would be ideal. I just don't know if I have the willpower. But the thing mm. is, like, Native Americans weren't vegan. Like, they just learned their philosophy was to appreciate the animal. And I'm like, can I do that? Yeah, they respect it. Yeah, they respect the animal. By like, eating we're it. But can you harm- do that? Harmony. Can you respect the animal even if you buy it from, like, let's yeah. say, that, that's a what I was place say. that, like... Maybe not. Well, then... I hunt like, all my meat. You're literally going to the grocery store like, I respect the animal. <laughs> respect I know. Like, oh, God, <laughs> God, 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 I respect you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Praying to the animal. Well... Yeah, no, it's it's such a it's such a challenge because I see them like 
struggling to find somewhere to eat or just going yeah. with friends to eat and then being like oh there's like nothing here for me besides an appetizer that's like seaweed salad or some shit and like i'm like damn i'm so sorry and again Ooh. even like vegan restaurants they're expensive too like they they're are. pricier mm-hmm. yeah. it's like i can't afford this <laughs> yeah. so it's no. kind of hard would not do it respect to everyone that does it's wild but yeah i just <sighs> want to do it because i heard that red meat is like bad for you yeah. in large quantities yeah so if you're eating red meat every day which is why i eat chicken everything's kind of bad for you though yeah. i'm seafood too i'm not the biggest fan of chicken i j- <laughs> okay well <laughs> like i don't know it's it just seems bland like yeah you have your seasonings whatever but like for the most part i just i'm not a fan maybe you're not eating the right kind of chicken the rotisserie chicken <laughs> the rotisserie chicken no. dude i, I hate- don't honestly i don't even remember the last time i ate chicken are you serious just, oh wait, actually just a red actually, meat girl. no no today because i ate an enchilada but oh cute so you're just like a red Besides meat girl that. or what yeah I or guess you're so. a fish girl i like fish so you eat fish, fish most of the time yes and red meat i would say more red meat wow interesting i think chicken is just i don't know why i like it so much it's just such a perfect texture it's just so like i love when it's like kind of crispy or something i don't know it's just so fire you know my favorite meal on this entire planet like my absolutely favorite meal is a milanesa which is a breaded chicken patty that like the patty gets like kind of pounded thin and then they um dip it in egg and then they put it in the um bread crumbs and then they fry it and then that with red rice like mexican red rice and then refried pinto beans it's so fucking delicious like that is my favorite meal that would be my death row meal. i was literally just about to ask you that like Dude, yeah i think so if you were death on death row, row that that oh, would be your last oh, meal that would be my last meal. that's the last thing you're tasting yeah and dude i'd be okay, so happy and what about for dessert <laughs> for dessert yeah oh shit okay dessert? that's ooh. Mm. Mm. damn i'm not honestly i'm not a big fan of desserts like it's always mm. kind of too or much do you guys need something sweet after you finish eating always i love dessert I you know <laughs> <laughs> i do too after breakfast and <laughs> okay n- n- okay not breakfast. <laughs> like dinner. Like wow. After like dinner, after if dinner. you're not going to get oh. bubble or ice cream, like, did you really go out to get dinner? However, I will say sometimes I get too full that I can't I feel have like I, ne- I, I never can't. get full. I never get There's too always full room. for dessert. Like, I always have room for it. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Wow. I made that mistake recently. Oh, I, I ate too much and I was like, I can't have dessert. Oh. <laughs> it's just, it doesn't even taste good even if you have room for it because there's no appetite what no, no but it's, no, it's, it's, it's something sweet it's yeah, not savory it's, it's but still sweet. i'm like it's like fuck. i mean you oh, can definitely also, taste it another thing is i don't ever know when i'm full like ever like Are i just kind of eat okay, until i'm that. like okay i feel like i ate a good amount and then i just leave it there like you only know when you're full when you're about to explode you're like okay I'm but i never sure get full. to that point Ooh. so that's why i always have room like i never feel too full but i feel like you shouldn't get to that yeah. point where it's like I like can't. even after eating Korean barbecue or like all you can eat sushi, it's like I try to get to that point, but I don't get there. I'm like, okay, I'm like, I ate a good amount. Really? That's it, dude. I always feel like I can, like my stomach is about to explode. That's how I know I'm full. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Literally, when I'm at home, I am eating until my stomach feels like it's about to like okay, I can no longer really? eat more. Mm-hmm. Yes, I don't just. I like, try stop. to fill myself like. Maybe a little bit more than three fourths, not the full whole, but like. That's crazy. How do you know you're three fourths full? Because I just know I'm like, okay, I'm satisfied. I I can eat more, but I don't want to, mm. or else I'll feel like shit. <laughs> as long as the craving is gone, I have no desire. Mm-hmm. Right. I think you know you're full once the craving is like, okay, this isn't tasting as good. But yeah, I don't know. I just have to eat a lot. Because I'm trying to gain weight, so I just. You're a growing boy. It. I am a growing boy. I am. Recently, I feel like I haven't been eating enough. I feel like I've been like, my my, because I've been going out so much. My eating schedule has been fucked. So I've only been eating like two meals a day, instead of my usual three, which is bad. But a lot of people don't eat three meals a day. Like almost everyone I meet, more than likely, they do not eat three meals a day. I don't either. I don't. <laughs> I don't. That's crazy. Like I literally think I'm the only one in this podcast that eats three meals a day. Isaac, Isaac, that doesn't. is pretty no, rare. Isaac doesn't. That's kind of cool. Isaac, Isaac doesn't. He doesn't eat like breakfast. Isaac would be, but he doesn't yeah. eat breakfast. Oh, only. see, it's like I combine breakfast and lunch. It's like first meal mm-hmm. is brunch, just bowl. 
And it, and then I'm like usually filled up, and then dinner, and then boom, you're done. Interesting. And then dessert. Okay. Well. Always dessert. Yeah. No. I need my three things. My three meals. I need my like. I just woke up meal. I need my like halfway through the day meal, and then I need like my before I go to bed meal. <laughs> wow. Wait. So dinner. Dinner, but it's not savory. Dinner for me is like always snack? sweet. Snack. No, dinner for me is like a peanut butter sandwich with a protein shake or like oatmeal or like fucking yogurt and fruit or... Isn't dinner like your chicken meal? No, that is technically my lunch. That's the meal before dinner. Which what? always like... I always get confused because Americans eat like a savory meal for their last meal of the day, which is wild because I've never done that. It's always been a sweet meal for my last meal of the day. Is that not weird? I've heard you talk about it. Yeah. Like, I feel like everyone, about everyone does that. that. I didn't know this. Mm. It's like so. You eat your savory meal like around five ish. Yeah, my savory meal is around four or five. That's your lunch. Your lunch is at five. That's a late lunch, no? That is quite a late. <coughs> lunch. I guess so. Yeah, around usually exactly. around four, four five. Okay, wait, so what time do you eat breakfast and then lunch? And then... <laughs> usually, <laughs> usually my breakfast is around average like ten thirty to eleven. That's okay. breakfast, and you won't eat until five, and then I won't eat till like four or five, uh, and then I'll eat again around nine or ten. And nine and ten is my dinner, which is peanut butter sandwich oh, or cottage okay. cheese sandwich. You know, I would consider that more of like a midnight snack. Yeah, that's crazy because I'm full as fuck after that. <laughs> like two pieces of toast, <laughs> a protein shake, well, and yogurt. I guess I would count that as like skipping dinner. Oh, okay. Well, interesting. Because like, where did dinner go? Dinner is lunch. Dinner is sweet. Sweet dinner. We should start normalizing. I don't get that. it. Yeah, no. Mine I is. I don't know where I picked that up. From. I'll try to get a coffee or a matcha in the morning, or whenever I wake up, and then that will fill me up until I get my first meal at like two or three p.m. And then I'll eat dinner at like seven, eight, and then dessert. Wow. Dessert. That's good. I, I'm a simple man. You really are. No, yeah. you really are. Dude, I feel like um I don't know. <laughs> I forgot. I was, I was gonna say it. Dude, it was so good. It was so important, I swear. It's okay. Uh, Just remember. Anyways, no, I don't remember what I was gonna say. Fuck. But yeah, no, eating together really is such like a bonding experience. Like my favorite part when like meeting someone new or just being with someone is just eating together. It's such a sweet thing. You know? Yeah, I I know that, like, for dates, like, first dates is a common thing to, like, you know, grab dinner or whatever. Oh, it's so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's just, like, okay, now we have to, like, sit down and eat. And, it's awkward because like, you don't get a chance to just eat without yeah. talking. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's just, it's just, like, an awkward time. But it can be, it's obviously, like, you know, there's still fun in there. But for me, it's just, like, a part of me just dreads it because it's, like, Oh my god! I have to sit down and I have to eat at the same time while talking to them, and it's just like oh make my. sure I'm eating pretty, make sure I'm like not like that. spilling anything, not spilling. <laughs> talking to them, they like ask you something, you're still like mid bite. Yeah, oh, that's so. yeah. I thought I like dinner dates, and I do. But it's after just not you the get first to know one. them, yeah. The first, after you get to know them more, then dinner dates yeah. are like really cool. But first day for like dinner is usually just awkward. You gotta feel comfortable and, like, with there's so much like tension. Yeah. And, like it's like yeah. a good kind of tension. Like sometimes I'm up for it, but most of the time I'm like, no. Yeah. That's why yeah, getting man. drinks on the first date is usually better. Dude, the concept of getting drinks on the first date sounds so depressing to me. Just I hate the fact that when you're like past, like you know, once you graduate college the way you get to know people is by getting drinks like hey you want to go get drinks you want to go get drinks like you if you meet someone you're going on dates like you want to go get drinks it just seems so it just seems so bland like so cookie cutter you know like so what is your ideal way to well i feel like if i'm like trying to get to know someone it'd be nice to do something that like is more creative for example if you meet someone and you both really love going books it's like hey you want to go to like a bookstore and like talk and do whatever or like if you meet someone and they really love surfing it's like hey you want to teach me how to surf instead of just going to the cookie cutter like hey we should go for drinks sometime you know like isn't no, that kind of like i mean obviously like mm-hmm. I- i'm only saying that if you want to like sit down and get yeah. to know the person like that's first date stuff mm-hmm. um yeah i don't know i'm biased against the. it just sounds very corporate like i'm like traumatized by like twitter corporate experiences it's 
drink like alcohol plays such a huge role in networking and like that business is. like I no never one realized talks about until, it until but... like you're in the like settings where it's like everybody's drinking to like talk to each other yeah it's, it's wild no it really is that could be a whole it's like topic. an excuse to get together to work together and mm. talk to each other let's get drinks i know i'm gonna start pretending that i drink and then just, just order, ask like, for water virgin yeah can i get a virgin mary um yes <laughs> yeah so that's 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 my thing with eating like yeah those awkward dates are like it's just a lot of silence it's a little too much silence for me but when you're with friends though i think eating is really fun like eating just anywhere like whether you get takeout or you like go get food just the process of going to go get food waiting for the food finally getting it eating it like it's a whole it's always an enjoyable experience for the most part um so yeah i don't know i just really really like it yeah crazy i remember uh Kayla and i were in france uh and we were walking around to find a place to eat the thing mm. with france is that yelp doesn't really work like no one uses yelp there so you really have to walk around yeah. and see what's good and, and just hope I for the best use yelp a lot yeah so, so. <laughs> so the fact that yelp wasn't really a thing made it so much harder do they all use google maps apparently in other countries they do it's always oh. all on google well we were using apple <laughs> yeah. oh. but can i walk by like this chinese food place and we're like let's eat here instead and then we got takeout went back to our room put on a show and it was just like <laughs> so vibey. It felt yeah. like, you know how people just like order in like Chinese takeout <laughs> no. and like in like the boxes. Yeah, yeah. It, it felt exactly like that. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah it was the a really Chinese nice takeout time. trope. Yeah, right. dude, I've never done mm-hmm. that. We didn't even mean to do that. It just happened yeah. organically. That's fine. We didn't want to walk more, and we were hungry. I've had and... takeout fun. What? Really? Shit was not. No, no, <laughs> Silence. That. Yeah, did not do it. Yeah, I do not worked. recommend it. It was so. Anything Sad. takeout soup is like I've yeah, had takeout no. ramen, yeah, and that no. always tastes horrible. It's it literally yeah, does. It's, not it's never hot enough. It's not. The That's same. the thing. It's never hot enough. And then the like, I feel like the noodles, noodles are, are bad. chewy. Can yeah. we just make instant noodles? Dude? How does that beat? Okay, well, takeout. Come on. Huh? Instant noodle. Yeah. How does takeout takeout ramen? Because in, beat instant, instant noodles, noodles isn't like real food. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like it's cardboard. <laughs> literally just starches. <laughs> yeah dude but um no i ordered i love the i love like when it's late at night you're at someone's house and you're like oh should we go get food and you like all go get food and then you come back and eat it mm. like that's that's really just it really just hits perfectly it's a bonding experience it is the little journey on the way there waiting mm-hmm. talking and then coming back and like settling down i mean that's really all you can do to hang out i feel like if you're not getting food then what are you gonna do you know no I mean? literally right, like, dude yeah that's another issue like if you're not getting food like that's why i'm saying you got to get creative so that's why everyone resorts to like let's go get drinks but i'm like fuck i feel like i'd get bored of it and also just of getting food all the time like hey let's go get food it's like fuck dude what's but you love eating i do but also you know there's so many issues when it comes to food for one like in the business world people go on so many lunches that like they don't even yeah. eat they just go order a side and then leave it and then like okay i got i got another lunch after this I'm like crazy, and then people leave their food on the plates. Like in the business world, everyone just fucking orders a shit ton of food. They eat like a couple bites, and they're like, "Okay, we're good. You can take it away." So I'm like, "Damn, that was like a big culture shock when I entered that whole space of like going to lunches and shit." Is that people will not eat their food? They just order it as like a little. I don't even know. Like I'm literally like, should I take that to go? Like, <laughs> you have to go box. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, no, it's okay. It's okay. I'm good. Yeah. I'm like, damn. Um. But yeah, don't get takeout fun or takeout ramen or takeout food. Yeah. Also, what sucks about being vegan is you don't you can't do that because if it's like eleven p.m., what vegan places are going to be open? That's really the worst part about it. Yeah. Like, not even like a late night ice cream shop. It's like oh it's ice cream. Like They're you have to like, make the ice cream yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it sucks though because it like I feel like it does make it harder for like to bond with people because if we're like, oh, you want to go eat, and they're like there's nothing open i'm like and then they probably feel left out exactly and it's like okay let's do something else never mind i don't want to be vegan <laughs> and whenever like an ice cream place does have a vegan flavor it's like one yeah. flavor and it's like what if you don't even like mint. it <laughs> like, it's like, like mint. <laughs> just i water ice and mint <laughs> like mm. vanilla wow vanilla thank bean. you thanks <laughs> thank you <laughs> thanks no yeah it's not cute but 
Good luck to all of you guys that are vegan. Um, yeah. I don't know. There's I admire a- it. Let us know your experience and Please why you do, do. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because people do, do it for like different reasons. Then I'm always so curious. Right? No, yeah. Good for you. But thank you guys for listening to this episode. Um, Didn't know we had so much to talk about. Honestly, food. I feel no. like there's still so could, much. Yeah, I was like, I was surprised. Okay, yeah. It sounds yeah. like there's so much more. Like, we didn't even talk about. Yeah. This, this, we didn't this. talk about the dark side of food. Uh, this was just yeah. about like food as a bonding experience yeah. as a culture thing something more upbeat more upbeat you know because i think we talked about it not too long eating ago, disorders actually. and shit yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah my fitness pal yeah oh my oh, god fuck. <laughs> i read down with that app like every two months and i'm like crazy yeah. banana 110 egg 60 That's um crazy oh my yeah god. anyways guys thank you so- oh my god here's a pet peeve so when i hate when a rotisserie chicken taste like sink water and sometimes what? costco's r- r- rotisserie chickens taste like sink water like i could taste like they use sink water to make the chicken Ew. Ew. disgusting Ew. i hate it but i still eat it i don't really trust rotisserie chickens like why are they so Cause, cheap oh because they just they lose money on them costco just subs like um they, uh, I don't know. they lose money on them anyways that's scary we could do a whole episode on costco deals anyways thank you guys so much for listening <laughs> Uh, to this episode i hope you enjoyed it maybe got some entertainment some life wisdom yeah i don't know in the in the poll or whatever answer why you're vegan and if you are vegan or vegetarian or pescatarian okay cool all right thank you guys for listening we'll see you in the next episode bye bye, bye.